How can you use Square to grow your 3D printing business? Well, today I'm going to show you just that. Whether it's taking payments at markets, sending payment links online, creating invoices, or managing your inventory, I'm going to take you through all the steps to help you to be able to start using Square in your 3D printing business today. And no, this is not a sponsored video. I am making this in response to a couple comments that I received asking how I already use Square in my business. And because it's so easy to use, I wanted to help you all to be able to set it up to use in your business. Welcome back to Design and Forge Studios. My name is Ashley. Let's get into it. So to get started, click the link in the description below to go to the Square website. You can scroll down and you can see that they have different options for their hardware. For me, when I first started, I just needed their most basic piece of hardware, which is pretty much what everybody else here would need to, and that's just the reader. You can see here that the price is $69. This is in Canadian dollars, so if you're in the States, it will probably be a little bit cheaper for you. But this reader allows you to take card payments by either tap, or if their card doesn't tap, they can insert it, and then they would do their PIN on your phone. It's really easy to work. It's really easy to install, and it just charges by one cable through USB, and the battery lasts a really, really long time. So for me, if I was wanting the hardware, again, this is how I would go. But you also don't have to get the hardware right away because now they let you tap to pay on your phone. And for most people, that will get you through at least your first couple markets. Now, you can also go and look at the different plans that they have. I use the free plan. For almost everybody else, the free plan is what's going to get you through as well. So what the free plan means is that there's no monthly fees attached to it. There will be fees attached to you actually accepting the payments or sending invoices. Obviously, Square needs to be able to make their money to be able to support their platforms. So they have to have those fees. But you don't need to necessarily pay for the subscription fee. So you can see here what their processing fees are. Again, I am in Canada there probably is a difference in these transaction fees between us and the US and maybe the rest of the world, but you can see what the fees are here for Canadians. And I think that these fees are pretty minimal for how easy their system is to use. So now you can go on and create yourself an account. I'm not gonna go through the login because I'm just gonna have to blur everything out anyways. So you can see that I'm in my account here. I've gone through and pretty much reset almost everything in my account to help to record this video. The first thing that I want to do is show you how to add items into your inventory. And then what you can do with this is it allows you to either A, track your inventory or just to be able to choose that specific item so that when your customer actually receives their receipt, if they want it or invoice, they actually have an itemized detailed line by line of what it was that they got. So they know exactly what their charges were for, which people tend to like. So when we create an item, we can choose anything. So you can see here, I'm just going to go with typing in a large Cinderwing Dragon just so that you get an idea of how to quickly add these items. You can choose to put in a description if you want. That's entirely up to you. Then as I scroll down here, you can see there's different options for things. So you can choose to have different menu groupings for your items or you can choose to put things into categories. I'll show you that in just a minute. If I had a Dragon category, this is where I would search for it and then save it to that. Maybe I have a Cinderwing category, maybe it's a large prince category, whatever that might be. But if you keep scrolling down, you can see that you can actually then enter the price for your item. So I'm going to input the price here and then I'm going to keep going and I want to actually be able to manage my inventory for this at the same time. So if I go into a show and I put in the quantity of inventory ahead of time, I can then easily refer back to that after and say, okay, how many of this item did I sell? And Square will show me that. So I've added in the inventory there. There isn't really many other options that you need to go with. You can click through everything and see what the different things are. You can choose to add, you know, colors. Maybe you want to know all your red and black Cinderwing dragons or whatever it might be. You can go ahead and do all of those different things. But for now, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. So we're going to go ahead and save that item so that it is now in our inventory. And you can see that it's there and the price and how many we have on hand. 
And now we'll just go through quickly and do a second one just so that you really get the idea of how this works. So again, just going to add in the Flexi Dracula. We're going to go down and we're going to input our price for it and we're going to input our quantity for it. Okay, and now you can see that both of those items are there showing in our inventory. So let's go over and we'll create the category like I had said earlier. So you just click on categories and we're going to go with Halloween so that we can put our Flexi Dracula into that Halloween category. You can see that I created it and then we're going to go in and we're going to click add items. We can choose our Flexi Dracula and now it's under that Halloween category. You don't have to do this. It's just a way for you to better manage your products, your inventory after the fact, if you want to be able to go back in, or even when it pulls up on the phone app, I'll show you in a minute, it'll show the category. So if you have Halloween dragons, whatever it might be, you can click on that category to be able to find everything inside of there a lot quicker. So moving on, I want to show you how to take payments now, because let's face it, we do this business because we want money. So let's make it really easy for people to pay us. And that's what I love about Square is it makes it really easy. So just to quickly show you what it looks like, if you want to do a quick charge on your computer, you just put in the actual dollar amount here, and then you can go down and you can manually enter their credit card details. Keep in mind, there is a different charge amount for manual entering versus swiping. So you can also choose to swipe that little tiny square reader comes with the other square reader and you just plug it into the audio port on your computer to be able to use it. Otherwise, you can also go and do the itemized sale. And this is where you can actually input one of those items that you already put into your inventory so that your customer knows exactly what that charge is for. And then again, you scroll down and you can manually input their credit card or you can choose to do the swipe feature. And again, this is just if you're doing it on your computer. But let's face it, most of us will be doing this on our phones at the market. So this is what it looks like as far as doing this on an iPhone. And you can see our two items there that we added, the category for the one and then the dragon for the other one. And I'm gonna click on it and then I'm going to click charge. And what that's going to do is take us to the next screen where they can pay. Now, if they're going to pay cash, you could choose cash and that just allows you to track your inventory. You can have them also then tap using the phone itself if you haven't purchased the reader or you can use the reader. They have a security setting that doesn't allow me to record or even screenshot what it looks like when you're tapping to pay with the iPhone. So I cannot show you that step. But now let's talk about creating invoices as another way to accept payments. Invoices are really great for people who run businesses or ordering something for an organization. It's a really professional way of getting a receipt to them. So to do that, we can just click on the invoice and then we got to input all their information as a new customer. You can do their first and last name, their email. And if you scroll all the way down, you can actually input further information for them. So company name, address, all that kind of stuff. And it saves it for future use to be able to refer back to if you need it. Now what we're going to do is you can input all of the different fields so you can put in the service date so the date that you're going to get them the item or the date that they're ordering it if you want you can input a little message i always like to thank people for supporting my small business i might put in a couple other lines you know refer reach back out to me if you have any other questions that kind of stuff and then you can see that there's lots of other different options here we're going to start by adding the actual item that's going on to the invoice and if you don't have it in your inventory, you can choose to add it in here yourself and put in the details that are needed. We can change the quantity, as you can see, and it's going to automatically total everything up for us. And then you can see the other options. There's nothing else that we need down there. If you need to charge sales tax, you can do that in a setting within Square. But I don't have that turned on right now. Then you can choose when you're going to send it. So say you want to create all your invoices at once, but you don't necessarily want to send them right away. You can choose the date that you're going to send it, and then you can even choose when you want them to pay it. So you could say it's due right away when you receive it, or you have seven days to pay it, or you have one day to pay it, whatever you like. You can also then choose what payment types you're going to accept. If you want them to be able to do something like afterpay, that's an option. It does come with increased fees, so pay attention to that. You can have your different payment options there. 
And then you can also change different customer actions. So for me personally, in my bakery, I always have the tipping option on. I don't think that there's anything wrong with having the tipping option on. People can either choose to tip or not to tip. And if you're doing a big custom project for somebody, they may want to tip you. So let's give them that option and toggle that option on. Then another great thing that I really like that Square does is they will automatically send reminders to people. So say I sent it and I have it scheduled to not be paid for seven days. Well, they will send repeat reminders. And especially if they don't pay it by that day, they'll continue to send them if they're actually late paying it. And you can even go back into Square after you send the invoice and you can see whether your customer has opened that invoice or not. So if somebody comes back and says, I didn't receive the invoice, you can actually look and see whether it's been opened up and viewed or not. Then the other way that you can take a payment on here is just to create a payment link. So if you want to sell an item and you can create a link that then you can put that button on your website or your Instagram or whatever it might be, maybe you just want to send somebody that link through email or a message, you can come in here and quickly just add in that item and create a link for it, copy that link and send it to them. So as opposed to having to do the whole invoice, you just send them the link, they can pay that amount that's in the link and it's so fast, it's so easy to do. I use this option all the time actually in my bakery for people to pay ahead of time online and I highly recommend it. Now, I just wanna show you quickly all of the different options that they have here on Square. You can create different sales reports to show all the variety of things that you have sold. This is really great at the end of a quarter or the end of the year so you can look back and see the things that were in demand during what time, which can then help you to plan better the following year. You can check your inventory, but if you want really good insights into this, you do have to have one of those memberships that you pay for monthly. Personally, I don't think that it's something that you really need. At some point, you might get to that, depending on how big your business grows. But in the beginning, you don't need that. But you can create custom reports to show a variety of different information for you. And it's just a really great way to be able to look back on all of your different sales and capture that data so that you can use that to grow your business. I really hope that you found today's video useful and that you can use it to grow your business. Having something like Cash App or Venmo to market are great, but they don't actually give off that air of professionalism. We don't even have those options here in Canada. We would just have to do something like an Interact email transfer or I guess offer them a PayPal option. But in my opinion, Square really brings up the professionalism of your business, allowing you to send those invoices or take those really quick payments at the market that then you can even provide your customer with a receipt on the spot. If you like this kind of content to help grow your 3D printing business, we would love it if you gave us a like and a subscribe below. We're a new channel, we're still trying to grow. I love being able to bring and produce this content for you guys. Take the knowledge that I use to build a really successful bakery for the last over five years as I now use that to grow our 3D printing business and pass it along to you. If you have anything that you need help for in your business, please let me know below in the comments. That's how this video was created because I had mentioned Square in a previous video and somebody, a couple people actually asked how they could use that. So please drop those in the comments below. Give us a like and a subscribe and follow along if you want to be able to have some help to grow your 3D printing business. Until next time, happy printing.